Whew! Okay! Turn off the damn air conditioner. Hear myself think. Hey everyone, this is Lonnie with Fat Unathletic Nerds Talking Sports. And welcome to the first ever episode of The Cutting Edge with Jackknife. And yeah, this is something I didn't necessarily have a timetable for. But the so topic I'm about to talk talk about in this video kind of forced me. Like, I have so many thoughts right now. And don't worry. There's, I'm going to have... The format's not going to stay like this. It's not just going to be me ranting my car. I'll have a nicer sub than this. It's just that we're a couple hours removed from the New York Rangers firing their GM and president and, and, and Jeff Gordon and John Davidson. And I... Two hours have gone by, two hours or so and change, and I'm still in absolute disbelief. <sighs> this was, comes less than 24 hours after the team released a statement saying, you know, they they pretty much told George Peros, the head of pl player safety, to quit his job because he's not freaking good at it. And here's the thing. I think a lot of people would agree with him because you know you're not going to suspend a guy for punching the dude with his head on a, on the ice then yeah you're kind of not doing your job there dude oh yeah right, right now Chris Jury is the acting general manager and president since the firings of JD and Jeff Gordon jeez I'm just in disbelief the Rangers, JD, who was a former player for the Rangers, John Davidson, one of the most beloved, he's a fan favorite even to this day. Just the, so, you'd think he'd have to do something egregious to be fired. And like we, they, at, the, at the time of this recording, nothing's been released yet by the team. So I can neither confirm nor deny anything. But I've basically boiled it down to, these three things based on the reports I'm hearing. One, they, they embarrassed the NHL last night with their statement, and those two are the fall guys, which reports are denying, but I don't fully believe that's the case. That's one. Two, even worse, James Dolan, the owner of the Rangers, is not happy with how things are going right now, like how the team is underachieving this year, and in return, he's firing JD and Jeff Gorford. Underachieving? This team is in a rebuild! What more do you want from them? And, and not to mention, this isn't a normal season. This is the freaking COVID season that ended up reshaping the divisions into a total clusterfuck. The Rangers were looking back when this was announced, I thought, yeah, the Rangers aren't going to have a shot at the playoffs this year. Right now, it's a, I think it's... I think, if anything, they overachieved. They remained in contention, mathematically, till like, three games left in their season. All right? What, you want them to win now? Really? You're going to trade away all this youth for, like, players past their prime? Like, in 2018, Gordon and JD put out that statement... Put out a press release or a letter to the season ticket holders pretty much announcing the rebuild. And listen, we were thrilled. That core was not going to win anything, okay? You need to start from the bottom. You need to tear apart and build it back up again. And that's what they've been doing. And things have been going great. Like, you really expect this team to win a Stanley Cup now? You're insane. Like, give it three or four years. Like, this makes sense. But no. Like, uh. That's that's the second thing I heard. Three, apparently, th these this I don't know. Maybe this is two and a half. Maybe this is three. I'm tr I have a lot of thoughts right now. I'm trying to keep them all together and not ramble on too much. Three could be that the Rangers didn't have someone to answer the call for Wilson that night. Fair enough. Yes, freaking Artemi Panarin. Jumped on, you know, Wilson's back to, you know, try to get him off freaking Buchnevich. Oh, but, you know, people trying to defend Wilson be like, oh, he, he shouldn't have jumped on his back. Maybe he shouldn't have punched Buchnevich's head 
while it was on the ice and Panarin wouldn't have jumped on his back, you know what I'm saying? But geez, I get the saying, you know, oh, no one was, the Raiders don't have any players to answer Wilson, like tough guys. And I completely get that. I totally get that. Listen, if, let's say that was not the Rangers the Capitals were playing and that was the Islanders, for example, and instead of Buchnevich's head on, on the ice in front of Wilson, it's Anthony Beauvillier or something. I don't think Wilson does that in that situation, okay? Because not only would he get the $5,000 fine from the league, he'd get the fine of Matt Martin. Just saying. And I hear, I hear that and think, you know what? Is James Dolan trying to turn the Rangers into the Broad Street Bullies? Let me add a little context to that. In the early days of the Flyers, shortly after, you know, the NHL expanded after the original six era, you know, six new teams came into the league, the St. Louis Blues absolutely embarrassed the Philadelphia Flyers one of those games. And that gave a turning point to then owner, late owner Ed Snyder of the Flyers. He, after that game, he said, I never want to see this team be intimidated again. And that pretty much led to the creation of the Broad Street Bullies. And you know what? Yeah, it worked for them. They won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups in, I think it was 75, 76. Whatever. If I'm wrong on that, just correct me. But, okay, back in those days of hockey, that makes sense. You were only rolling out three lines or so. Now you're rolling four lines or so. You can't just have guys that are only there to fight anymore. And if they are there to fight, they're not going to be getting playing time every game. You got to have guys that are there that can play hockey and fight. Like, that's why Tom Wilson, listen, as much as Ranger fans might hate Tom Wilson right now, believe me, I hate him right now too. Believe me, would I take him on my team? Absolutely, freaking lootly I would. But yeah, Dolan, if you're going to, or who, Chris Drury, whoever, if you're going to load, get some tough guys. For this team to help protect, protect the Panarins, protect, protect the Lafreniers, or the Zabanejeds, or Bucinevichs, they gotta play hockey too. Like, I know there's some guy it, they have in their system, like, who's like 6'6, 225 pounds. Alex Zedstrom, I think his name is. I mean, I don't know if he could fight or whatnot. This guy better not back into me. Hold on. Gather my thoughts. Okay, he's not backing into me. Jeez. But yeah, the. the of those three scenarios, the one that scares me the most is that the Rangers are not in win-now mode. And that's not making Dolan happy. This team shouldn't be in win-now mode. They're not ready. And it's okay. When you re We knew this from the get-go. The fans accepted this. Hell, one of my friends, when they... Who was, who was a Devils fan, but he was a Mets fan, he saw the Rangers release that statement, like, announcing the rebuild, and he was like, you know how, yeah, I have no idea how bad I wish the Mets would put out a statement like that. And as far as I know, they haven't yet, and, you know, but yeah, we're on great pace to, you know, be an elite team, and, like, just give it another two, three, or four seasons, and this team will be in the same spot as the Colorado Avalanche is right now. I mean... Can't trade away your youth to, you know, create a, an elite window that might not even last a season or two. Like, you're basically going to make the same mistakes the Brooklyn Nets made when they traded for Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett when they were essentially dinosaurs. Like, I was so happy when the Rangers did announce the rebuild because they were breaking the old habits of the Rangers of getting these old free agents who are basically dinosaurs past their prime. There were only two or three examples of it actually working out. One of them was Mark Messier. He was like 31 when we signed him and he, you know, he got us the Stanley Cup. Yarmir Yager was in his early 30s when we got him. He still, he did pretty well for the short, the three or four seasons he was here. But yeah, but then other times you got freaking, you know, Phil Esposito, who was good, but you know, not the player he was when he was with the Bruins. You got Gila Floor, who was a dinosaur. But I'm rambling on and on. Don't bring back the old habits of getting these guys past their primes. The Knicks are good now. Did Dolan look at that and be like, you know what? Now I got, to, now I got to put my hands on the Rangers and screw them up. Now that the Knicks are good now, jeez. But oh my God, I do not know what to think of this. More is going to develop, but. 
I was very optimistic about this team's future coming into this season, regardless of what what happened or the outcome. And this team has faced a lot of crap this offseason, you know, with the D'Angelo fight that led him getting exiled, the Panarin politics situation, and now then the whole Tom Wilson fiasco, and now this. I honestly don't know what to think now. Do not blow this team up. Do not trade away the youth. It's it's still going to happen. What what's still going to happen? This team will be good. They're just years a couple of years away, two or three years away. Don't blow it up over, you know, what happened the other night. Anyway, if you made it this long, I hope my incoherent rambling didn't cause you to click off in the last 30 seconds. Jesus, Murphy. Yeah, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Funs Podcast and on Facebook at Fat Unathletic Nerds Talking Sports. Be sure to follow us on wherever you get your podcasts from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. And yeah, this will this is only episode one of the cutting edge with Jackknife. Don't worry, it won't be as spontaneous as this. There'll be a lot more organization. It'll look a lot nicer than, you know, just me sitting in my car rambling. So yeah. Have a wonderful night, everyone.